Welcome back to part two of our video tutorial series where we are learning how to create a professional magazine cover using Adobe Photoshop. As you can see on your screen right now, um, this is where we left off in the first part of the series. We've got a good chunk of the magazine cover created, but in this video we're going to finish things off completely. So the first thing I'm going to add in in this tutorial is what we call a puff. Now all a puff is, is basically a little incentive for your readers to buy the magazine. And in today's example we're going to be offering our readers a free poster to buy this magazine. In reality it's not free because it's part of the magazine and you've got to pay money, but still it makes the reader think they're getting a freebie by buying this magazine. Okay, so puffs usually appear inside little shapes. They stand out and they try to attract quite a bit of attention because they are what's going to make the reader, or one of the things the reader's going to look at when deciding um, if they should buy the magazine or not. So we're going to put it inside a little circle shape. And to do that, you need to go down the left-hand side again on your toolbox and look for your Shapes tool. Okay, now here it is here. If you hold your left mouse button down on it, you can get rectangles, you can get ellipses, which are circles, triangles, polygons, lines, and even custom shapes. We are just going to be using the ellipse tool for today, which will draw us a circle. Now when you draw your circle, if you were to just click and drag, you could draw any shaped circle, even make it into an oval, make it a fat looking circle, whatever. But what I want you to do is hold shift when you're drawing your circle. And as you're holding shift and clicking and dragging, it draws a perfect circle. So it doesn't matter what color it is right now, mine's black, yours might appear a different color, that's fine. Just draw me a circle, it goes down in the bottom right hand corner of the page, and is probably, probably a little bit smaller than that, about that size there. It doesn't matter too much what size it is, but something similar to that black circle that I've just drawn would be good. Now once your black circle's in position, we're going to change the color of it by simply heading to our Layers panel, where it says Ellipse 1. It might be a good idea to double click on that and just rename it to Puff. And in this empty space um, next to the word Puff, double click your mouse so the Layer Style panel comes up. First thing we're going to do is put a color overlay on. Now the color we want um, needs to have opacity set to 100%. And I want to choose a bluey color from his jersey. so. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm also going to put on a stroke, which is a border. And the color for the stroke down here, just going to be maroney kind of color that goes with his jersey. You'll need to bump the size up a bit. Mine's currently five pixels, so um, I'm going to keep going until it looks pretty decent. Maybe about 20 pixels will look good, something like what you see here. Click OK once you are good. And that's our little um, circle for our puff. Now we need to add a bit of text inside of it. So the first bit of text we're going to throw in is the word free. So just click anywhere on your page for now and in capital letters write the word free. Highlight that text and up the top here you can make it a bit bigger. Probably going to up to around 30 point for now. I'm going to choose a um, fairly bold looking font. So we've used Franklin Gothic Heavy in the past. I might go with that. And the color I'm going to choose is the yellow from his jersey. So that goldy kind of color. I'm just going to pick it up and move it over here. Uh, I could probably go a little bit bigger than what it is now. So just play around with your sizes until you are happy. Uh, probably something about there will look good. Okay, and remember just yeah, somewhere around there should look pretty nice now. I'm going to hit this um, character panel here. I can see that it's got a bit of tracking, which is space between the letters in it. I'm just going to turn that 50 down to zero so the text is a little bit more squished together. Now once we've got the word free in there, we're going to add some more smaller text beneath it that says Brisbane Lions poster inside. So let's click on the page and just simply write Oops, I'm going to turn caps lock off for this one. Brisbane lines on the first line, press enter and write poster inside on the next line. Change your color to white and I'm going to get you to change your font too to something a bit skinnier. So I'm just going to go Franklin Gothic book. Size is going to be relatively small. I'm going to start with 18 but we might bump it around in a minute. Just move the text down below the word free. It's got free. Brisbane Lions poster inside. That's not too bad. Uh, probably, 
Put an exclamation mark there and maybe make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Up to 22 doesn't look too bad. I'm going to make that free a bit bigger. I still reckon we could get a bit more size out of that. Um, all right, so that's looking pretty decent. Free Brisbane Lions poster inside. Now the next thing we need to do is put some little stars above and below this text. So to put stars in, you need to go back to your shapes um, tool here and choose the polygon tool. Now with polygon, you're able to draw stars simply by clicking once on your page. And we'll just go with 100 by 100 pixels. Uh, we'll have five sides in this polygon, which is going to be a star. Uh, corner radius zero, star ratio 47% is fine. I think that just came up by default, so I'm just going to roll with that. And I'm going to put from center and simply click on OK. And a little star, which is currently black, appeared on the page. Now I want to change the color of that again to go with the Brisbane Lines theme. So I'm going to go to my layers and where it says Polygon 1, I might just call that star. I'm going to double click my mouse next to it to bring up the layer styles. I'm going to put a stroke onto my shape here, which is going to be that gold color. Now the size, let's just drop it to one pixel for now. Actually, it might be a little bit bigger. Let's try. What looks good. Maybe about four or five pixels looks good. And we want to put a color overlay on it as well. The color overlay for this one's going to be the maroon kind of color that we had in the jersey before. Okay, so that's your little star just there. And once you've got one of them, we're going to copy and paste it two more times. So we're going to have three of them. The middle star is going to be the biggest. When we bring out the other two, I want to resize them just a little bit to make them a little bit smaller. Okay, so I'll just copy that one. So just Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste, or you can go up to Edit, Copy, and then Edit, Paste to get those stars in. Now it's a little bit fiddly here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this center star. Uh, well, I'm not going to move it too much, but I'm going to probably make it a little bit bigger than what it currently is because it's just a little bit smaller than I'd like. So I want that center star bigger than the other two. So that doesn't look too bad. I could probably nudge them down a little bit. I'm just going to highlight them all. and You can use your arrow keys to nudge things around a little bit. That looks pretty good. Um, instead of drawing them all again, I'm just going to highlight all of them, copy and paste them, and just drag them down the bottom as well down here. So basically symmetrical. Again, use your arrow keys just to nudge it around a little bit. And I'm going to move the little fellas up a little bit. Like so, that doesn't look too bad. Basically want that middle one a bit lower and the little guys a bit higher. Same up the top here, but in reverse. Little guys a bit lower, center one a bit bigger. Oh, geez, it's fiddly, but hopefully you get the idea. Something like that looks pretty good. So that will attract quite a bit of attention. All those stars, the big word free, um, that should make people want to buy the magazine. And that's the whole purpose of a puff. Uh, once we've got that in, it's probably time to add in a few cover lines. Now, cover lines are just the text that go around the um, outside of the image or around the magazine cover, just to tell people um, briefly what they're going to expect to see inside of this um, edition of the magazine. So I'm going to put in a little bit of text up here in this gap first of all. This is going to be my, um, oh, they're going to be my cover lines. So if we just go back and have a look at the example, we've got these three here. Um, so let's start with AFLW, how will new clubs perform? So let's start with nice big text, AFL. W. Now I'm going to change my font there. It's probably a little bit too big. Uh, I'm going to go with Franklin Gothic Medium for this one. And I'm going to change the color again to this kind of bluey color we used before. Doesn't look too bad. It's a bit big. I'll we'll resize that in just a moment. Yeah, about 
35 for now. We can always resize it in a minute if that's a bit too big still. AFLW is, oops, it's the first little bit. And then how will new clubs perform will come under that. Now when we put that in, uh, oops, I need to turn caps lock off for a start. How will new clubs perform? I'm going to highlight it and make that black, that text, or even just a very, very, very dark grey, so it's not quite black. And I'm going to change it from Franklin Medium to Franklin Gothic Book and make that a lot smaller as well. Bring it down about size 20. I'm going to change the alignment of that text to, to right align. Um, so in paragraph here. Choose right align. You can also do it up the top here, just right align that text. Because it's on the right hand side of the page, I just want it going down the right hand side, like so. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. So I do need to move these around and nudge them around. Um, basically, I want them to start and finish, I'm oh sorry, finish with the end of that L in the word football. Yeah, that. Doesn't look too bad. Um, I'm thinking. Oh, no, that'll do. That's the first one. Okay, next one that we put in is just a copy and paste job. So I'm going to press Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and we put in top five. And we rank the top five players of all time. Is the text that we put in underneath it. Alright, looking good, and then we'll just duplicate that one more time and put in the last one. Obviously a little bit too big here, we will have to resize it all in a sec. So, we are up to the 2022 draft. And what are we going to say? The hot new talent. Now you can see as I write these, I'm including what we call buzzwords. They're exciting words that make people interested in the magazine. So words like hot and new are examples of buzzwords. They're words that are exciting and interesting and make people want to buy the magazine. Things like top five, so having lists, um, that's another way that people will want to buy magazines. All right, so make sure you're including exciting buzzwords on your cover. I'm just going to have to highlight each of these, um, where's my layers? I've selected the background there, which I didn't want to do. Okay, I'm just going to highlight all that text and just resize it to make it a bit smaller. All right, so now it's just a matter of getting it all in position. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you a little trick here in a sec. If you highlight all that text again, just clicking and dragging over it, I'm just going to have to deselect Locky Neil. There's a button up here, this one here, Align Right Edges. Just pushes everything over to the right hand side. So they're all perfectly running down that right hand side. And now all we need to do is just space them out because they are a bit cluttered. So I'll select them one at a time and I'm just using my arrow keys here to nudge them around. This 2022 draft is a little bit big for my liking, but oops, I don't think we're going to get out of that. That doesn't look too bad. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so they're evenly spaced out. They're all nice and neatly aligned down the right-hand side of the page. If they're on the left-hand side of the page over here, I'd align them to the left edge of the page. But because they're on the right-hand side, okay, I used my right align feature to position them down the right-hand side of the page. So a few little cover lines in there looking good. Uh, the next thing we might do is basically put another version of a cover line, but it's known as anchorage text. And that's the main um, bit of text you see on the front cover that relates to the photo. So we need an article in the magazine that's about Lockie Neal. So let's put in some text now that's going to relate to him. So for this one, we need to use a different font and really make it stand out. So what can I use here? I'm going to click once on the page. 
I might go with Impact. Uh, that's a nice, big, thick font. And what's it going to say? It's going to say King of the Jungle. King of... Actually, King on one line, of the on the next, and then Jungle. And that's going to be aligned to the left-hand side of the page because we're now on the left-hand um, section. Now that could be a lot bigger, so just hold shift and resize it or change the size of the text like you usually do. Now the color of this text, we're going to do something fancy here. Double click over here in your layers panel to bring up your layer style. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a pattern overlay. And you've got a few different patterns here. You've got water, you've got grass, you've got trees. So you can click on these and it puts patterns in. Now if you click on some of these, they look pretty ugly and they're a bit difficult to read. But what I'm going to go with is this middle water one. And instead of using just that greeny color, because you can see that it doesn't quite fit with the theme of our magazine cover, I'm going to put a color overlay on. And the color overlay is going to be that goldy color that we've been using. And I'm going to turn the opacity down. The opacity is how transparent it is. So if we turn it down a bit, say around 50%, it's going to make it 50% transparent. So you can start to see underneath it that pattern that we chose before. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. Another thing we could do here is we could add in a stroke, which I'm going to go with that maroon color again that we've been using. And again, bumping up the size a little bit so it looks kind of cool. Not too big though, maybe around five or six pixels will look good, but that doesn't look too bad. Um, don't think we need to change anything else there. If you wanted to, you could change this leading up here where it says auto. You can choose the space between the words, so each line of text. So obviously that's way too small because they're all jumbled up. I'm just going to shrink it a bit, maybe about 75-ish, it's 78, might look good. Okay, so that's a nice big section of Anchorage text that says King of the Jungle. That is referring to Lockie Neal, obviously playing for the Lions. And in there, what we're going to do is put in some text here that says Lockie Neal's dream of winning a premiership with the young Brisbane Lions. Let's grab our text tool and write that in. So Lockie... Oops. Lucky Nails. Um, dream of winning. Premiership with the young Brisbane Lions. Now, when we put this in, I'm going to change the color back to black, or almost black, just a very, very dark gray. Going to change my font. Uh, we're not going in impact anymore. We might go back to this Franklin Gothic medium. That size is going to have to be a lot smaller. Uh, I might change that leading back to auto. Let's move this around. That's looking pretty good actually. So just bump it up underneath King of the Jungle there. Yeah, not too bad. Now there's one more thing I want to put in above King of the Jungle here, so I might just nudge all this down a bit because we've got a bit of room to play with there. I want to make one more appealing um, thing on the page. I guess it's not a puff as such, but it's just this bit here that says exclusive interview. Okay, by using another buzzword, exclusive, it's going to make people want to buy our magazine, and by putting the shape around it, it's going to make it stand out as well. So I'll grab your rectangle tool and draw for me a skinny rectangle up in this space here. Now the colors are going to be the same as what we used in the circle down below. So the blue fill and the red stroke. So probably just go to your layers, double click on that rectangle one, give it a color overlay, choose that blue and Make sure the opacity is set to 100% so it's nice and bright. And back on stroke here, make sure you check that box and there's the stroke color already in there for us. You can bump it up to a bit thicker. How thick can we go before it looks silly? Maybe about 15 pixel look good. Press enter when you're done, you've got that little box in. So inside of that box, which we can make a little bit bigger, 
we're going to write exclusive interview. Now I just noticed something on my box that I've got slightly rounded edges. If you've got that issue, these little white circles here around your edges. So what I'm going to do is just click on that and drag it right out so it makes sharp edges. That looks better. And I'm just going to grab my type tool, click on the page somewhere, uh, change my color to white I think I had. Make my f actually, I accidentally clicked inside the heading there. I'm going to have to click again. I'll just click over to the side here. It's going to be pretty small, so exclusive interview. It needs to be in capital letters. What's the color? Use my move tool to move it over. Oops. Tricky one here, I might make it bigger to start with and then move it. Now it's coming in below where I want it, so I'm going to have to just drag it up to the top of my layers panel here. Not sure why it did that, but anyway, easy to fix. Once it's on top, we can get it inside of this box here, and I can see that I have accidentally deformed it, so I'm just going to, have to stretch it out a little bit. Just make sure it's not too deformed. Exclusive interview. That doesn't look too bad. Zooming back out now. Yeah, pretty good. Might be a little bit too big. So just up it down in size a tiny bit. All right. I think that looks pretty good. So zooming back. Let's go back and look at our example. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. So I think we've got everything we need. We've got our big masthead at the top. Probably a little bit too much space that, up in this section, but never mind, we'll leave it as is. Big masthead at the top. We've got our anchorage text. We've got a few cover lines, our main image. We've got a puff barcode. And on that barcode, remember, we've got the price and the issue number. So we basically used all of the magazine um, conventions that we'd expect to see on a cover. Um, one last thing I might do is just perfectly align this text down the left hand side of the page. So inside football, king of the jungle, that little bit there, probably this rectangle too. And just hit this left align button here, the one that says align left edges. Just nudges everything across to the left a little bit. Um, I think we're all good to go now. Just play around with it, any final little touches that you think are necessary by all means go for it, but I think that is a pretty decent looking magazine cover. Um, so you'll be doing something like that for your assignments, so all those skills that you've seen me use in this video series, I expect you to be using in your assignment for top marks. Okay, good luck with yours, and I will see you in the next video.